Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Northwest Fishing Fanatics Lake Fishing Adventures. That's with Gene, that's me, your humble host. Today, we are targeting landlocked coho salmon. Oh, oh, oh yeah! I'm gonna show you exactly what I do to catch these things without using downriggers and so without using snap I, weights. In my opinion, I'm gonna show you the techniques I use for trolling, the depths, the gear, the tackle, and the presentation. So stick with me. This journey started in the 60s, and I have fished from Alaska to Florida, hunted the Arctic for caribou, and combed the coastlines of Kodiak and the Aleutian Islands in search of meaning and purpose. These excursions exemplify a deeper understanding of success beyond that of just catching fish or bagging big game. They are about the chase and learning who you are. They are about exploring, appreciating, and respecting the vast expanses of our nation's forests, lakes, streams, rivers, and oceans and finding our place in the universe. My name is Gene Quinney. These are my stories, this is my life, and these are my adventures. I am prepared for any kind of weather. There was a, about a 67 or 70% chance of rain today, so I figured I'd put my waders on. It's been a couple of weeks since I've been fishing. Shoulder, back, all that stuff, um, and work, of course. So thanks for joining me in this episode of Northwest Fishing Fanatics Lake Fishing with Gene. Lake Fishing Adventures, or something like that. Anyway, I'm here, as you can tell, on the beautiful reservoir known as Rife Lake. This place is close to my house. It's an easy fishery. I didn't even bring any downriggers, so I'm just gonna be using a surface rod, and there's a fish right there already on the fish finder at 45 feet. I can't get to him. <laughs> and the reason, reason being, is I like fishing with downriggers. That way I know exactly uh, the depth that I'm at, and when the fish hit, you know, you, you break it off and you've got just nothing but the fish and of course the dodger. That's why I like using downriggers. But I don't have downriggers today because I didn't plan on fishing here so I didn't bring my downriggers because they're on my big boat because we're getting ready to go salmon fishing. Anyway, that's another story. So let's get going. I'm going to show you exactly what I'm going to use. Now I did not set anything up. These are exactly the way they were laying in the boat from the last time I was fishing. I don't even, I don't even remember what's on here. So. Let's see, what are we going to use? And as a matter of fact, I've got four exact identical setups with different dodgers and uh, different lures. Uh, so I'm just going to use what I have here and until I can't catch fish. And if I don't catch fish, then I'll start changing up. But if I start catching fish with what I was using before, I'm just going to keep that going. Keep that going. So the last time I used this gear, I think it was on American Lake. Oh, fish! Look at that. That was a smash. Ooh, baby! All four rods exactly the same. Nothing fancy. That's what they are. Reels. 20 pound test Power Pro. I'm gonna put this one down. That's a half fast dodger by Aero Flash. About a 10 inch, actually that's about a 12 inch. Yeah, it's about a 12 or 14 inch um, leader on this Kokanee King. I'm going to use that bad boy by Lure Jensen. That's a uh, an out, not outdated, 
well, it is outdated because it's really old, but it's uh, it's not manufactured anymore. Same rod, same reel. It's a uh, half and half, but it's not uh, peened. And again, this must have worked because this is I have two of these on. That's another Kokanee King. These are discontinued lures. Um, you can't find them anywhere. Nobody sells them unless you find them used on eBay or something like that or leftover stock. So this one has got my dropper rig on it. Uh, let me show you this. If you guys haven't seen my dropper rigs, I do have a video where I make these. I gotta make sure I don't run into the winds blowing me into shore. So this is made out of 200 pound test uh, big game mono and I do this just because it's what I use for halibut rigs So I don't want to go out and buy something special just for this dropper rig and it works great actually So I've got a barrel swivel on this end heat shrinked and crimped heat shrink uh, Heat shrinked and crimped here with a slider rig and this is where the weight goes on to it And then I have a bead chain here and then this section here is about three feet long which goes to the Dodger. And of course, we are crimped and heat shrunk here too. That's my dropper rigs. Easy to make, and they really help uh, keep the weight away from the action of the Dodger. Let's get them baited up. If you guys watch enough of my videos, you know what I use. Oh, I'm gonna regret this. I got fish down there at 100 feet. <laughs> no way to get to them. <laughs> That's okay. These guys right here. I used to try the, I used to make my own corn, all kinds of different, um, you know, recipes, you know, with garlic and bloody tuna and all this other stuff mixed in there. What a pain in the neck. And nine times out of 10, the fish would hit whatever you put down there. And so this is what I use now exclusively. It's clean, it's cheap, they work, and uh, I don't have to make a mess. And you just carry three or four bottles of them wherever you go and you're always ready to, always ready to catch fish, and they they seem to work. I have not any pro had any problem with these things on all the bodies of water that I fish. They work everywhere. And all I'm gonna do is take one of these things, put it on here, right in the center, just like that. That's it. That's all. Okay, that one's gonna get a dropper rig, and I think I'm gonna go with a two ounce cannibal. And that bad boy is just gonna go right here on the, the little dropper. Just like that. Now, I've had people ask me why I fish with both rods on the same side of the boat instead of spreading them out. Um, it's just easier. Both rods are right here in front of my face. I don't have my back turned to the other rod. That's why. That's all. So right now I'm doing 1.74. I don't know if you can see it very well, but... It's dodging nicely at 1.5. I'm gonna go back 40 feet. That's not very far, I know. Oh, okay, 42. And that's gonna go here. Okay, 42 feet on the dropper rig. Okay, so there's no dropper on this one. So it's going to be just a just a straight flasher and that guy. Hundred and forty six feet of water. And I'm gonna go back on this one. That's 40 feet with the two ounce, so it's down. This one here is just gonna go straight back to, I'm gonna start at 60, but I'm gonna go to 60. And that's gonna go here. 
Oh man, it feels good to be out here. My last, uh, I'm doing 1.4, so I'm gonna kick it up to 1.5. So uh, these aren't kokanee. So kokanee, I wanna, you wanna be a little bit slower. Uh, these fish here are landlock uh, coho, landlock silver salmon. So a little bit faster speed is troll speed is okay for these guys. But the last time I fished was uh, that shad video. I went with Brian down to the Columbia River. Went down there with the intention of catching shad for halibut bait and I haven't had the opportunity to go halibut fishing since then. Weather's been kind of messed up, scheduling, workload. I mean, I do work. I do sell houses and, and own and operate a real estate company. All right, well, let's try to find, let's find some fish. Ooh, ooh, fish, 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 fish. Okay, the fish right there. That didn't take long. A couple of minutes on the troll. What I'm gonna have to do is bring this guy around this way, underneath that rod. Get my net ready. My new net. That didn't take long at all, did it? Dropper rig, two ounces, 40 feet down. Been here about three minutes and fish on already. Can't beat that. Oh yeah, come on. Oh, there we go. Fish number one. Look at that beautiful, beautiful fish. Five minutes or less. Number one. Let's try that again. It's starting to rain, <laughs> but I'm ready for it. Man, let there be no doubt, it's raining. Oh, fish, oh, did you see that? That one got smacked. Now, I've, I did a little uh, switch up on this rod here. I put a one ounce, no, a half ounce cannonball on the dropper rig here. So I have two dropper rigs. This one is back 80 feet with the half ounce and the, uh, what am I trying to say? Uh, you know, the, the same lure I just showed you. Jesus, the kokanee king, God, brain fart. Uh, yeah, so so um, 80 feet, half ounce, kokanee king. Uh, uh, and then this one is uh, 60 feet, two ounces with the kokanee king, both tip with the maggots. Now I am making a turn to the left. So both of these are gonna dive deeper and slow down a little bit. So it'll be interesting if I pick up a fish here on the drop. I haven't marked any fish. Of course, I didn't mark any fish when I caught that fish. And that's the funny thing about fish finders. Sometimes, you know, if, they're, if there's a lot of fish, you'll mark them. If there's only onesie twosies, you won't mark them, but you'll still catch them. We're still on the turn. Whoa, fish! Oh, <laughs> look at that! Okay. It worked. Now this is the one that's back there 80 feet and we're on the turn, so I don't want to get tangled up with this one. This lo looks like a bigger fish. Ooh, this one feels like a bigger fish too. Okay. 
Okay, come on. Oh, it just came off. <laughs> Darn, your face is all wet. 80 feet. The longer you fight, the more likely you are to lose. Oh, fish. <laughs> Whoa, that didn't take but a second. Oh, I think he came off. He didn't get buttoned up. And when you're going out, don't just let it drop because you'll get tangled. The likelihood is that you're going to get tangled. So when I go down, I'll take it down like 10 or 15 feet, slowly let it drop. That way you always have tension on your rig as it's falling and you don't, uh, you know, stand less likely a chance to get it tangled. 80 feet. Well, let's spend a few minutes uh, since uh, we had. It's been a few minutes since we had a had a hit. I just had. There's a fish right there. Oh. Yep. I just had a strike on that rod there. We gotta bring him this way. This one doesn't feel like a very big one. Whoa, there you go, there you go, come on. Calm them down a little bit, come on, calm them down. Calm them down and bring them up, up to the net. Nope, putting up a little bit of a fight there. Come on, baby, up to the net, there we go. Oh, yes. Fish number two. It's a good sized fish. There's number two. Don't leave fish to find fish, right? Okay, let's go back down to 60. Oh, fish. Oh, he's not there. <laughs> Did you see that thing get hammered? <laughs> that was awesome. Oh, fish right there. Oh, there we go, baby. Come on. Whoa, yeah. Whoa, yes. That was, that was awesome. Come on, baby. I missed him. I missed him. I missed him again. Oh, I missed him three times. Come on, Gene. There we go. Oh, ho, ho, ho. that's fish number three. Oh, this is a this is a much better size. Oh, this is a bigger fish. Look at that thing. <laughs> oh, come here. Awesome. Number three. So far, here's two of the three. Oh. Yeah, can't beat that. One more fish, one more fish, come on fish. Oh, there's, there we go, there we go. Okay. 
feels like a foul hooked fish. Either that or it's a good size. Oh, oh, oh yes. Oh, oh, this is a beauty, baby. Okay. This is a nice one. Get this up. Down the way. Keep tension on there. Definitely last nice fish. Definitely a nice fish. Okay, come on. It jumped out there a couple of times. Oh, 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 yes. Ooh. Oh, 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 oh. Ooh, baby. Don't go that way, no. No, 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 no. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. It's okay, come to me. There you go. Oh, this one is a dandy. Yes, there we go. There's our final four. Come on. That is a heck of a fish to end on right there. Took a little bit of doing to get that last fish. But let me tell you something, it was worth it. You wipe your face off there. <laughs> oh, thank you for joining me. Thank you for watching this episode of Northwest Fishing Fanatics Lake Fishing Adventures. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please do so. I'm sure there's going to be something coming up in the future that, you're like, that you'll like. Ocean Salmon is opening up very soon, and I think I'm going to be going out there in a day or two. So uh, thanks for watching. Peace, love, tight lines, and I'll see you on the water. If you liked this video, be sure to check out our other videos where you'll join us on the ocean catching kings and silver salmon, lakes catching kokanee trout, and landlocked coho. We'll also be working on riverfront homestead and harvesting venison. Stay tuned for more fishing and hunting and outdoor adventure videos. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell button so you get notifications of new uploads. Thank you for watching.